inside them and doesn't and it takes hold and it doesn't leave for a while and I've had films do that but it's kind of like a one day thing and then it's gone but some people it stays with them for a week or longer and you know they might have nightmares about it or whatever um, and when you find it hard to function after seeing a film like this it's gonna pretty much do something to your psyche you know you so I wouldn't want to be responsible for causing damage to someone psychologically by having them watch something like this so the best thing you can do if you put a film like this in with all this some of these elements that could affect people I mean, I'm not saying it's going to make them go out and, and be murders or anything. I'm saying it could psychologically cause them to have nightmares, night terrors, whatever you call it. And, you know, mess with their sleep patterns and cause them not to be able to focus on work or whatever. Um, and definitely not one for a child to watch. Um, you know, I'm all for letting somebody watch what they want, but... A child's not really going to understand what this film is all about. And so there's really no reason to even allow one to watch it. But, you know, that's a little side note. Um, but there's a lot going on in this film that... Uh, there's kind of some underlying stuff. I don't want to say subliminal, but there's creepy noises in this film. Even before the demonic possession starts. Um... And there, there's even more of that for those of you that have seen the uh, version you've never seen before. Of course, it's not really the version you've never seen before because most everybody that, that likes The Exorcist has seen it now. But that's what it was called when it first came out uh, because a lot of people hadn't seen that footage. Um, the, the creepy elements and all those little uh, underlying factors that were not part of the original film are re-added to the version that I just talked about. So it's kind of, it, it's, it's even more creepy in the newer version than it is in the original version. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you, this is a creepy film. It gives some people the heebie-jeebies. Like I said, my dad refuses to watch it now. Um, he will not watch it. There is no way on earth he's going to watch it. So, just based on not only the special effects, which may kind of gross some people out, this is another one that the psychological element is going to come into play a little bit. Okay, so that's The Exorcist. Um, the last film I have uh, is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And... Um, uh, this is the unrated version that I picked up. Um, again, this is a demon possession film. And I must be honest. I know The Exorcist is a classic. And I have watched it many times. And The Exorcist is one of my favorite horror films. But there is something about The Exorcism of Emily Rose that goes a little bit deeper than The Exorcist. Uh, there were actually some things in this film that creeped me out and the exorcist just didn't do that with me even the first time i watched the exorcist it didn't um there were at least two to three scenes in this film that that were just i don't know if it was the time period that i was watching it in or because i was by myself or or what it was but it just seemed a lot more creepy than anything that was in the exorcist and um, so if it creeped me out, you know, somebody that's seen uh, uh, several horror films in their life, uh, you know this is going to, you know. Somebody that hasn't seen a lot or possibly hasn't seen any at all, this would not be your first choice for a good film to show them unless you want to be sitting up with them all night. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a scene, in, like, of her eating bugs while she's saying the Lord's Prayer. It might kind of gross people out. And some of the special effects as she becomes more demonic might make people a little queasy. But the overall storyline is probably what's going to be most disturbing, uh, 
just watching this girl go from a normal college student to this demon uh, is just, it, in a way, it's heart-wrenching to watch, even though you know it's not real. It's, it's just a horrible thing to watch, and then watching the the priest try to get the demon out of her and the watching the girl get weaker and weaker uh her hell starts fading and you know it just goes on and on and on it's all it's almost torturous it goes on so long um and it's just disturbing in general so again this one wouldn't be a good one to uh just start off a horror movie marathon with uh if you're watching them with someone that is new to the horror genre. Okay, so that's The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And um, again, that's the 10 films I picked for now. Like I said, I might do a second or third part of this at a later time. But that's all I have for now. And thanks guys for watching. I hope to be back with something, something different uh, soon.